So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about laundry. <clears throat> and this is, a, this is a issue, a problem that we all face. You know, you can try to put it off. You can say, no, I'm not going to do my laundry today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. But at the end of the day, we, we all have to take care of it. And so I want to start off with myself as an example. Uh, I have a family of four with two young kids. And if you have kids, you know how much laundry they make. Um, we do about two loads of laundry per week. Uh, that works out to about, be about 30 pounds. <clears throat> um, so I, I want to measure how much time I actually spend doing my laundry. And I probably, you know, this is for two separate loads. I probably spend about four minutes total starting the machines. Uh, the machine works for 30 minutes. Uh, I think it's 15 minutes for each load. Uh, uses about 80 gallons in total of water. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes to move things from the washer to the dryer. And the machine then takes about 30 minutes to dry each load. And um, so the total human time is only about 14 minutes. It's not bad, you know. You know, this is for a whole week's worth of dirty laundry. And so the, their photos over here on the left-hand side are of my laundry equipment. It's pretty typical in the United States and probably most of the developed world. You have your typical top-loading vertical axis washer, you have a gas dryer, gas-powered uh, hot air dryer. Uh, this is not, that's not typical for the rest of the world. Now, um, the rest of the world, it turns out, uh, more much of the, the remaining parts of the world use their hands to wash their clothes. Um, so I'll give you an example. Uh, here we have, uh, uh, for example, in rural Guatemala, um, each family, someone in the family needs to spend about eight hours per week washing laundry. And this is a task that typically falls on women, either it's the, the mothers, uh, the daughters, or maybe grandmothers. Um, they spend, um, actually spend eight full hours each week doing this task. And uh, this time, it kind of displaces other things that people could be doing, say, educating themselves, or producing goods for sale in the market, or other kinds of um, social or economic improvements that they can make to their families. Um, and this is not just a problem that happens on the family scale. It, surprisingly, it actually happens on the large scale as well. Uh, in Peru, there's an orphanage called La Familia Sagra La Sagrada Familia. Uh, this is an orphanage that houses uh, more than 650 mixed-age children. Guess who does the laundry in this orphanage? Well, it turns out it's all the 15-year-olds and up. You know, they, I don't even know how long this takes, but they do all the laundry for all the other kids in the orphanage, which is great for the other kids, but it's a lot of work for the 15-year-olds. Um, so uh, you might be wondering, well, why, why don't they use washing machines? Now, we have the technology. Why don't they just use it? Well, it turns out the washing machines I pictured from my home are actually totally inappropriate for the environment in which these people live. Uh, for, for one thing, electric power, it's not always there. And even if it is there, it's not reliable. The same thing for running water. You know, typically, uh, you know, some of these towns do have running water, but other, many places people actually need to pump the water. And that really doesn't work with machines that expect a high pressure water feed. Um, so, so these things conspire to, to make the, the washing machine just not an economical choice to sell or, or uh, buy in this developing kind of environment. Um, and so these manufacturers just don't make them. It doesn't make sense for them to do so. Uh, and and that, that also makes it worse, or that kind of feeds back into itself and makes it so that they don't, they don't build the machines there and so they're even more expensive and they're all even harder. It's even harder to find parts and find replacement pieces or people that know, have knowledge and how to repair them. So, so it's kind of a negative feedback cycle in that sense. Um, but what that means is that there's an opportunity here to make a difference in these people's lives. So uh, this talk is about a, a device that I've kind of been tangentially in, involved with called the BC Lavadora. Uh, the idea here is to build a washing, clothes washing machine that's human powered. Uh, BC stands for kind of bicycle, bicycle technology. So it's something that you can pedal uh, the idea here is to make sure that you can build it locally with available technology and materials so they can be lower cost and also something that you don't need to wait for parts or get parts from abroad, imported stuff that's typically much more expensive and harder to deal with. Um, it, we hope that it can be priced e economically uh, and also that it uses less water, time, and energy uh, for the people who are using it. So. Uh, uh, I kind of talked a little bit about this. Uh, the, 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 for the design goals of this machine are that uh, A, should wash your clothes. 
Uh, so typical, what, what that typically means is a washing agitation cycle, a rinsing cycle with clear water, and also a spin dry cycle so that the, there's less time spent wringing out the water from the clothes. Uh, we want to make sure that it uses a small amount of water. You know, uh, my washing machine uses a lot of water, but um, a, normal, a normal front loading washer actually is very efficient in terms of water use. Uh, we want to use it out of common materials, stuff that you can find in the developing world, so you don't need to import any kind of parts or special components. Uh, what we found is that bicycle parts are actually pretty adept at solving these problems, or kind of, they, they work well in these situations. Uh, and also common plastic and steel drums for the, the kind of um, physical makeup of the machine. And finally, we want to make sure that it's easy to build and repair, so that there can build self-sustaining businesses around these kind of devices. So for the rest of this talk, I want to describe a few different prototypes that um, have been built by uh, students involved in this project over the years. Uh, first is the vertical axis washer, which is the first one that we've encountered. Uh, second is the horizontal axis and, and two variations on the horizontal axis. Uh, this is something like a front-loading washer. And finally, there's actually a portable design that's kind of um, in progress, something that can um, make different kinds of business models uh, exist in, in the developing world. So here's a photo of the first vertical axis machine that I mentioned. Uh, here on the right hand side you can see that it's basically a, a big drum filled with water with an agitator down in, into the top of it, much like the Bashi machine I showed you that I have. Uh, and here is a, the man who's operating the machine. He's sitting down and pedaling it. And what he's doing is he's, is, he's alternating his foot pressure kind of like this. And what that's doing is that's making the agitator turn in a back and forth reciprocating motion. Um, this is something that was built in Guatemala uh, uh, on site. And uh, it, does, it, it, it doesn't work very well. Uh, it turns out to use a lot of water. As you can see, you know, this is probably half of a 55 gallon drum. Uh, it also doesn't have a spin drying capability. So, so this is just agitation. It's not actually spinning the drum like my washing machine does. And, and the worst thing here, really, is that it damages clothing. So if you look at this agitator, it's actually a very aggressive 90 degree pattern uh, where the edges are very, um, they kind of stick out very far into the clothes and any kind of movement is going to be kind of a pulling, very aggressive pulling action. Because unlike my washing machine and commercial washing machines, which have a more spiral shape, spiral shape to the agitator in the center of the machine. So this actually um, prompted a, a different design. So this different design is a front-loading or horizontal axis machine. Um, this is a, a, the first prototype that, that I was involved with. You can notice what's, what's going on here is that there's two drums. This blue outer drum is a 55-gallon drum cut in half. And inside, it was a big red plastic bucket, which was cut and then mounted onto the back of the machine with a bicycle, or I don't think it's a bicycle bearing, but it's an industrial, basic industrial bearing. And what you do here is you fill the tub with water, you put their clothes in and soap in, just like you would. Then you can pedal, and this is using bicycle gearing, a bicycle drivetrain. You can use a low gear to wash the clothes with a slow rotation cycle for agitation. And then you can spin dry the clothes with a higher gear. Uh, it actually works pretty well. I wash my clothes in here. Um, so this particular model was built at MIT. Um, uh, we also are. There's another team that built one at Guatemala, in Guatemala on site with a similar technology with an uh, a inner drum. Now, this machine is not perfect. In fact, it does wash clothes, but it kind of falls in, in one particular, fails in one particular area, which is that that drum, that red inner drum, is supported on the back, but not the front. Now, when you load that thing up with clothes and start spinning it, what happens is that red plastic drum starts to bend. It's only supported on one side, so it, it kind of bends this way as it's spinning and it ends up rubbing the out inside of that blue outer drum. And so over time, that's going to wear out that drum and cause it to leak and, and break down. So, um, so, we, so we took that knowledge. Or sorry, I want to show two more pictures. This is the back of the machine. You can see the bicycle gear uh, drivetrain here with the multiple speeds, and also the industrial bearing on the back supporting the back of that red drum. And here is a, the prototype that was built in Guatemala on site. You can see it basically looks the same. I think the materials are they're a little bit different. This is a metal drum, I think, on the inner and outer. They're both metal. But this still has the same problem with the rubbing. So that actually led to a second design of the horizontal axis washer. 
And in this example, in this uh, prototype, there's actually two bearings on the side of, on each side of the drum. So that means that when the thing starts going faster, it doesn't really have any way to bend and to rub on the outside of the inner, the inside of the outer drum. Um, it did introduce some other issues, however. So if you can see, it has a door on the outside drum and also a door on the inside drum, and that's how you load close in. But it turns out this is actually pretty tricky to get right. So you've got to cut that door and make sure that it can close and stay closed while it's washing you know, with the load of the close inside. So it, it's a little bit tricky to get right. And so, so while it fixed the problem with the flexing, it introduced new problems. And so that led to another design of a, an inner drum in which uh, there, there's a special plastic section. Um, this we call the collapsible inner drum. And this is, uh, you can see here on the left-hand side, there's a, pic, there's a diagram of one of these sections. And so the idea here is to take these, these drum sections and assemble them into a completely round section. It takes several of them. Uh, and that you can see on the right side. Uh, and the nice thing about this design is it's easy to manufacture. It's simply thermoformed plastic with some holes, and it has the built-in agitation fins on either end of that section. Um, what's nice is, it, so it's easy to manufacture, but it's also easy to transport and assemble. So you can transport it easily because it's flat. And you can assemble easily just by bolting this thing together. Uh, and so another student, Lisa Tocarante, took that design and implemented a prototype. She built this at MIT. Unfortunately, there's no photos of the inside of the drum, but it's in there. And she, I believe she took the same exact prototype and she, she deployed it at that orphanage in Peru that I mentioned earlier. And uh, the last thing I heard was that the, the children love to use it. It's lots of fun, and I think it saves them a lot of time and water as well. Uh, so this is not the end of the line. Uh, um, there's also, there have been continuing advancements and, and new prototype designs that have been happening. Uh, this particular one, um, well, one of the nice things about having a machine that doesn't require water or running water or electric power is that it's portable. And so they took this uh, to, the, to the logical conclusion, which is to put wheels on it and handles. So now you can kind of roll it around like it's a wheelbarrow. And but this is actually really cool because now, no, no single family needs to buy one of these things. Now, it could be uh, my job. Let's say I, I want to make this my business. I can buy one of these devices. I put up my upfront investment, and I can cart it around to my customers' homes so we don't have to transport tons of clothes, and I can make some return on my investment. So this is a, a, I'm pretty excited about this concept, um, which is, I think is pretty neat. So the project status. Um, this is a, still an ongoing, very much an ongoing project. Uh, there, are, there are some prototypes in use, uh, but there are, there are new designs and new prototypes, like this rolling de design that I mentioned. Um, but it hasn't really been uh, adopted in a widespread way. And so I, I want to make sure you guys realize this is still a work in progress. There's still a lot that can happen and that will happen over time. So I want to leave you, uh, so that's kind of the, the story of the BC Lavadora as it stands today. Uh, I want to leave you with a take home message. The theme of today's event is made in the future. I want to make sure that it's very clear that it's us that makes the future. It's me, it's, but it's mostly you. Um, we make the future, we make the technology that is the future. And not all that technology will be microchips and biotech. You know, some of it will be appropriate technology that can still make a tremendous impact to the people of this world. So that, um, I'll conclude. <laughs>